We're in the middle of some fast solar wind that brought us to storm levels just a couple days ago. And we're watching the sun very carefully because a filament might erupt as it gets sandwiched between two new growing sunspots. Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week is getting very exciting. As we switch to our front side sun, you can see that dark coronal hole. That's been sending us some fast wind, and it actually bumped us up to storm levels just a couple days ago and brought us some aurora down to high latitudes. But that's not the big story. The big story are the two fast-growing sunspots in Earth view. One of them has been labeled 2735, and the other one might be labeled 2736 if it keeps growing. What's more is that that region might actually be a rogue sunspot showing influence from the new solar cycle. Now what's even more than that is it's they're both sandwiching this filament and we're watching this thing because it looks like it might actually erupt due to how unstable those sunspots are making that region. As we switch to our backside sun you can see in stereo's west limb that far view. You can see how active those sunspots are. You can even see a shadow of that filament kind of sitting off the limb there. It shows you how close it is to erupting. And if this region does go, then it could easily launch an Earth-directed solar storm and bring us a chance for more aurora. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the full moon phase, with the full moon being on the 21st. And even by the 23rd, the moon will still be about 95% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, our bright companion is sure to get in your way. So be sure to check your local rise and set times. And now for your Leo Mio Geo Orbit Outlook. As we switch to our low energy environment, these are the particles that cause surface charging on the outside of spacecraft and cause charging on the solar arrays and can cause some electrical discharges and short circuits. You can see we actually have been pretty intense with the fluxes, all that big red ring all around the geo orbits until about the 19th when it all got flushed out thanks to that solar storm and it's continuing to just begin to build up now. So right now we get a reprieve for surface charging of the space craft except maybe around the post midnight sector moving into dawn. Now as we switch to the high energy particles, these are the ones that can penetrate much more deeply inside the spacecraft and cause internal charging and get into the deep electronics. We ha also had a ring around the MEO orbits with those radiation belt, the outer zone getting pretty pumped up. But again, it got flush starting around the 19th and we haven't quite yet built the fluxes back up, but those are likely coming over the next couple days as we continue to get slammed by some of this fast wind, so you satellite operators, be aware. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are still in the trailing edge of that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that has been rotating through the Earth's strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with up to about a 25% chance of a minor storm. At mid-latitudes, well, we're kind of sitting at unsettled conditions, and we have about a 25% chance of active conditions, but most likely we're not going to see aurora at mid-latitudes. What's more is things will continue to quiet down in through the weekend before we get another chance at some more fast wind, but if that filament erupts that we're watching, we might see something sooner. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we have two very fast-growing sunspots on the Earth-facing disk right now. One of them has already been labeled Region 2735 by NOAA, and the second one, which could be labeled 2736 very soon, that one is showing an influence from the new solar cycle, so it could actually be a rogue sunspot. Now, these regions are not growing so fast as to cause any issue for radio blackouts with big solar flares. So you amateur radio operators and emergency responders and even you GPS users on Earth's day side, don't worry, we don't have any big risk of disruptions right now. But we are watching that and this could change. The one nice thing is that these regions are boosting the solar flux, keeping it into the low 70s for radio propagation on Earth's day side. That's wonderful because it keeps it in the marginal range and these conditions could easily continue over the next week. Now also because we are at the near solar minimum. We have a higher impingement of cosmic rays than we normally would have. So you frequent flyers, and this does include you air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes. You are in the marginal range for radiation dose right now, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans.
So the space weather this week is getting very exciting as we begin to taper off from the fast solar wind that's been hitting us over the past couple days and bringing us some aurora at high latitudes. You aurora photographers keep your fingers crossed because if that big filament launches on the earth facing disk, it could send us an earth directed solar storm, which means more aurora, maybe this time even as far south as mid latitudes. Now, amateur radio and shortwave radio responders, well, you should be loving life because radio propagation on Earth's day side is at the marginal range, and that's thanks to two fast-growing sunspots on the Earth-facing disk. One of those sunspots looks like it might actually be a rogue sunspot showing an influence from the next solar cycle, but it's kind of hard to tell as of yet. Luckily, neither of those regions are flare-active right now, but that could change. Now, as far as you GPS users are concerned, well, your reception on Earth's day side should look pretty good, and even at low latitudes on Earth's night side should also be pretty top-notch. And if that filament launches here in the next couple days, you'll at least still have some clean reception, probably through the weekend. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.